All right, it's a beautiful sunny day today here in Colorado. It feels like summertime, going through spring awakenings here. It's about 74 degrees, feels really nice. Definitely a, a, a welcome shift in the weather here. So it's beautiful, just kind of absorbing it. So this video is for people that are following the thread of the happy bubble and the density one being hosted and the flame body adventures and stuff that I've, I was documenting that I've gone ahead and put back up so people can kind of follow the evolution of that thread. So I, I've been steadily making posts to kind of uh, help fill in some of the gaps and explaining what's being taught in KDDL3 right now. And there's another major part that I'm gradually integrating that I felt just to make this video about and really stands out to me and really answers a lot of questions. And I, I plan to put up posts and more excerpts. I'm typing out a, a kind of a lengthy post right now, very technical post on what the happy bubble is. It's an abbreviation. I don't have the terminology right in front of me right now, but it uh, has to do with the URLA. The Y stands for, I believe, the URLA Councils Conservatory. Uh, and I'm, I'm still studying who they are also. I'm trying to put all this together. And this just really speaks to the fact that of timing in our codes because you can listen to a workshop over and over and hear one density level of it you know one maybe density one level of information and your codes on that level talking to you and then you can listen to it again and receive the where that information is coming from and the codes open up to it and respond and there's integration and sparks and magic that happens with that and that's what's happening right now with me and it's always a beautiful event when that happens so right now as I've always done um, I'm just documenting my experience my journey um, somewhat of a I guess journalist you know I try to get the the scoop try to get the KS story I believe in the mosaic effect that we are all presenting picture or little hologram, you know, also the hologram effect. Oh, there's a 444 right in front of me. All right, so yeah, the mosaic part, everybody's got something to bring to the table. I believe in that. And I don't think anyone should be discounted, no matter what shield, quote-unquote shield, that they're a part of, you know, or sitting on, or key to, coded to. I think everybody is valid, and I think that's a lot what sonocracy is, is about. Uh, KS talks about sonocracy, kind of rhymes with democracy, but it's a little bit different. Um, so that's gonna, I'm gonna talk more about that after the uh, kind of update thing on KDDL3 that I'm starting to integrate information of, of this that I believe is really relevant right now. All right, so some of the technicals that I feel are really just essential in understanding the timeline here and I don't have all the specific dates, terminology, all that in front of me right now, but I get the I get the overall scope of where this is going. So I've said before that you know density one is it, and this is the only only density level that is being hosted. That's gonna be that's kind of a yes and no because. She's, this is going to be an excerpt that I'm working on. She's listing off all the dates that, you know, for those that have seen the recent excerpt on the trumpets, it's called the, the TJs, the Trumpet Jehovians. 
and they're like you know blasts type things that happen over an uh, increment of time from like November every November they start up and then they kind of expand out through the density fields and my understanding is that's all linked to the Jehovian seals uh, we've been implanted with inorganic seals and it kind of does like a harnessing type effect and that's what the chevron bursts are for is to kind of neutral neutralize uh, I'm trying to think of the words I want to say disintegrate <laughs> but dissipate some of the that that frequency and it actually harnesses it kind of latches onto it and holds it and then transmutes it and puts it back into eternal creation internal creation as quantum and thought that was kind of interesting so what's basically what's going to happen is all of the densities density levels of external creation are going to have this bubble type thing around each one and they're each activating at different different times different years when this starts up and you know I, I thought that was really important news because it's this isn't a permanent deal of just density one floating off being hosted in happy bubble thing this is it's all of external creation that is eventually going to go through the same process that density one is going through right now there's there's a ton more information for me to digest and put together here and to try to assist and helping others understand the fuller context of what's taking place according to the Katie Dale 3 latest updates but I've been having some really some other insights into a lot of this uh, I, I just want to share and this is kind of uh, you know I do share my my journey but you know I also share my perspectives and things aside from that and kind of side notes and different things also transparency project when I first heard the news about the checkerboard matrix uh, something to note something else to note real quick about the checkerboard matrix is that she's now explaining this as um, information that gets diced gets kind of chopped up horizontally but it also gets chopped up vertically so it goes through like a shredder type thing in both ways and I don't know if it's always been explained like that I, I could probably check the chaos dictionary put up a slide here insert here about the definition the checkerboard matrix and do some comparisons notes it, it might have been but there has been a big emphasis on that and there has been a big change on how she is receiving uh, the information now and it sounds like more, little, somewhat of a more tedious process that she's going through to get this information because it's kind of sp spread out over time and she's explained this too it goes into time wave mechanics the E2 and B2 time waves all this and I've made excerpts on that also so she has clarified the reasons for that but I'll just share this and not to not to um, I don't know I, I believe in sharing our pers our perspectives so that's what I'm doing I'm sharing my perspective here and there's nothing there's no agenda or anything attached to that you know trying to stir anything up or whatever but I will say that when I first heard this information about the J seals checkerboard matrix all of this um coming back up again my initial reaction was um, I was really surprised to hear about these old terms and old uh, agendas and things uh, that are kind of re-emerging you know after this failsafe that we've had and I was pretty vocal about it back then in saying that it didn't resonate and uh, this kind of also goes into the timing thing of codes coming on when they need to come on but 
there, this is the conversation I'm referring to that I've been having with a, a friend that we've been catching up on a lot of this and we both kind of he kind of reminded me of this too of when I first heard this and he shared his opinion that you know his his opinion and I've, I've checked with him let him know that I'm sharing this also I'm not giving his name or anything but he kind of has a theory that the reason why it didn't resonate for him was that this is p potentially possibly another an old timeline that is um, playing out and you know all the information also another thing to note is that the beast machine everything's getting activated everything's on full tilt all their contraptions the thea code with the moon uh, the, there's a little black hole in between the moon and the and earth that this thing was supposed to activate and and pull the moon in closer to earth and get sucked in like a vacuum into this little black hole that's in between the moon and earth and get taken into this other matrix so that's not a pleasant thought but there's, that's all linked to the beast machine stuff that's been uh, that that's dance war series you know that's pretty old material it's like 2000 what 2003 I want to say it's maybe earlier than that 2002 I need to go back and see but it's pretty old and um, that is flame body too dance for freedom on Seagor a lot of that was where flame body first was taken down uh, taken line to the and all the codes and speaking of codes we're working with the Mahadra Drana again right now too and I'm you know like I said I'm, I'm integrating I'm putting all this together and sharing my thoughts also as I go of the initial reaction to some of this information and I'm inspecting that in myself and looking at it and like why did I feel that and, and what am I really feeling with this what am i seeing there's things that are clicking but we have we've got emotional body we've got mental body we've got uh, light body spirit all this this levels of our anatomy where things click on and other places where they don't click on uh sometimes and sometimes it all comes into alignment um hang on I actually got to drop off here Jeez, I got all kinds of uh, things talking in the hologram today. This is interesting. I pulled up for the drop-off, and I'll insert slide here. I took a picture of it. It's interesting. The numbers are talking a lot today. It's a, it was a quadruple seven. We do the triple seven alignments, but this was a, had an extra seven on it. It's interesting. So, yeah, getting back to this... Um, I question things, you know, and, and we should never stop questioning. We should always keep that little hints of, of, of uh, curiosity there. You know, healthy curiosity, healthy discernment, healthy questioning with everything. Um, even when we perceive the truth as, as in its entirety lay in front of us, we should always question. We should never lose that, and that's really, honestly, that's really what's led us to finding this work. We're all, every single one of us are truth seekers to varying degrees and varying levels of that in our life, and we really wanted this. We wanted to, to get to the core of what's going on here, and that's what KS offers, in my opinion. So that was my, that was my, my uh, rationale in questioning this. That was my line of thought in looking at this when it all first came out kdd03 that we're getting blasted by arcturian phantom arcturus you know um and the J jehovian seals are being pumped through the grids and everything i was just like what this doesn't make any sense we've we've Potentially, or possibly, some of us may have re removed these seals over the years with working with our, with the VECA codes. I don't know anybody that has claimed that, <laughs> personally. Maybe that'd be a good question to ask. But 
you know, it's uh, what are we really doing is if the frequency isn't even sticking here and the tools that we've had for all these years aren't working. There's a lot of questions that come to mind with this. So, and you know, it, it really made me question like, well, what were the Vecca codes for? Those were explained and, and the Ruche scepters, the flame codes, all these powerful, powerfully infused, frequency infused tools that we had to work with from our, our uh, higher selves, you know? And density locks, so opening up the density locks to our higher selves. So that's what uh, that's what we used to as the remedy for the J seals. You know, that was supposed to dislodge them and to help remove them. And that's been well, that's been like 20 years of us using these tools. Of, you know, at least. Uh, at least a couple thousand people, a few thousand over the years, you know, applying these tools diligently and removing the J seals. And then, and now here we are with um, the focus being on, on the trumpets, which was Voyagers 2, these were mentioned. That's where I was at. For whatever reason, it's, it, it's clicking in some ways now. The Illumin Air Breath has been a very powerful technique it's taken me a little bit to get it online it kind of sparks kind of flickers and when it kicks on I feel it it's like a pillar and I, I do feel the frequency but it's it's kind of a static field type thing you know to get past and that's also comes with the, the understanding itself with with the new material there's been kind of a static field I've heard it's not like I haven't heard these updates before but listening to them now there's parts of me that are receptive and ready to piece it together. And I've talked about that in other videos, Eckhart Tolle example, you know, Power of Now book, I believe he says that. The ears are ready to hear, you'll hear it, people can read this book and not hear a, not get anything out of it, you know, and then read it a week or two later, a year later, whatever, and have gone through what they need to go through to have their ears open to the information and that's exactly that's how this stuff works you know I, I've listened to these updates over and over and over and just hearing it on one level and now it's like oh okay this is what's happening here and something's kind of sinking in and I'm stepping into the the hologram you know or the reality field which which is really what me and my friend's conversation has been about is that there are other timelines going on that we are active in. We've got all these probabilities. Give the the scope of reality that chaos gives you is just it's unlimited. You know, we exist and all these other we've got other incarnations, we've got other probabilities, timelines, all this stuff. So it's not too far fetched to to look at this as, and this is all kind of, you know, going into speculation stuff and trying to piece it together in personal conversations, but I did feel to share this just to kind of broaden uh, some of the context here that's being given. Um, you know, right now our focus is on these dispensations. Of, I'll speak for myself, but in the group also. Those that are following along, we're kind of doing this together. It's a study group. And, you know, breathing the Illuminaire, which is another interesting subject. I heard her say, like, there's, if we make enough Illuminaire on the planet for breathing enough, there, she puts it kind of in that context, which I think is interesting also. What is... You know, the notion that a lot of this depends on this Illuminaire thing too, and it's always kind of revolved around our ability to uh, host ourselves, host ourselves. That's another thing I want to emphasize in this video. We are hosting ourselves. That is the approach that this should be taken. There's no savior stuff with guardians. Um, you tap into your guardian codes, you know, your lineage, and you f 
just stick with that like focus focus on that and stay focused on it and build on it and build your own bridge so <clears throat> yeah but the the luminaire i guess is the next thing that, that that would be what the you know back in 1999 2000 when the maharak shield came out that might that was the thing the maharata d12 frequency and then it kind of upgraded to the amaria buffer flame body and went through sliders with the hydrolase the allure rashatan all that kind of skipped some there but, and now now it's uh, the luminaire thing and that's what we're working on and on the the plasma catch-up the pdf for the word document that i made on catch-up is also starts with that you know and frequency building like how how we build our frequency we start with the latest information first, the latest techniques, the latest frequency first, and then just kind of braid that together and, and build it. And I, you know, that's important that we do that too. There's like, that's another interesting thing too, is that there's like this snap point thing that happens and the Metatronic seed atom is transmuted and just completely snapped off. I think that's the word for it. And then that's when the end burst is that what it's called? And that's when the bubble thing... I don't, I don't think the bubble is even activated yet. You know, it happens after these trumpets are done and stuff. But uh, they're working with density one right now. And then all the other densities are going to follow suit. And have their happy bubbles. And yeah, so it's... I, I relate to it. I understand it. It's kind of like a little cocoon or something. You know, I've, I've experienced some of that. I've had some very inner experiences that are like that and I've actually had some visions that the earth would navigate itself and go outside of orbit I had that way back you know like 2003 I was having visions of spaceship earth you know and and uh, she says that there's gonna there's other planets other fail safe planets hang on so this is yeah, there's a lot there. It changes the whole context of... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. It changes the whole context of of the vertical thing. You know, uh, ascension. It's not ascension now. It's incension. We're going in, into the internal planes. Um, we're not ascending vertical anymore. We're not doing the thing up to Terra and Gaia, etc. Up the densities. Everything's really really changed with that but you know there's people that have theories that yes we are we're still doing that uh, it's not necessarily a theory either because I, from what I understand and I need to get some more confirmation on this but she she's basically said the short way home is what we're doing with KDDL's long way home is going to be external and just doing all the external freedom teaching techniques so how, however all that fits too you know that's a whole nother story to get into and I, I am not anywhere close to putting that together <laughs> because if it's all getting hosted then if it's all getting hosted with this bubble thing later how is it still going to be how is it going to be the long way home for still doing the bubble host things I don't know I've got a I've still got a lot of integration yet to go through and I will just keep posting as I integrate and try not to go into too much speculation land assumption stuff but there is a lot of questions there's a lot of gaps still something interesting with gates is that I've, I'm kind of learning myself that gates can close but there can be other passages and we can still reach these places and I say that because I pretty much have consistently worked with uh, levels of parallel and I, I recognize the encryption of parallel where this place is and also parts of, of Terra and these areas that have fallen um, so it, it really becomes uh, custom 
customized journey for each of us and we're all just kind of expanding on on this whole thing chaos gives you the the bones and the balls you know that's what she says the bones and the balls and it gives you the maps it gives you uh, something to go off of but it's very very basic the more you piece yourself back together you start to realize kind of like mark said in the interview mark gibbs the guardian's given us a lot of information but there's a whole lot more that they haven't they haven't told us about and that's for good reason and don't want to release too much not too much at one time so that's that's for us to kind of put together and that's what we're all doing that's what i thrive to present on my platforms is other people's experiences other people's stories you know let's put this stuff together and see what what we're getting here i think that that's a huge part of this self-healing's a big part of course you know we've we've all got to tend to our own gardens and uh, stay focused on that of course but the mosaic effect is there and it's real and that's what what this uh, subject is about is uh, putting some pieces of the mosaic together in, in my conversations with others I shared before in the my flame body journal experiments with flame body that there was individuals that were tapping into this at the same time you know sorry for the bumps here they're doing construction on this road and that's that's an incredible event when that happens with people that don't even know each other sometimes two of these individuals did know each other and checked in and you know it's not like they had planned this or anything and they both were instinctively it kind of experimenting and both interestingly enough were kind of getting the same reactions of don't mess with it and you know I introduced them to another person who was asking questions at the same time and you know sometimes that's past life stuff where people have so much connection they're sitting on the same tribal shield or something and reconnect here in these ways and synchronicities but we're all naturally connected like this uh, another subject I wanted to go into also was telepathy I I'm starting to notice more and more in conversations and this would be physical conversations that I have but also uh, just uh, I do a lot of uh, recording audio recordings when I'm talking to people because of the oh, hang on I just shut my map off hang on all right so yeah the telepathy thing is interesting there's I'm picking up on it's very of course it's very subtle but in conversations there'll be like a be talking to somebody right before you talk to them there's something going on there that I'm starting to notice like right before and right after right right before you're about to say something there's some communication exchange that happens when two people are meeting each other in that that still space you know it's like I said it's very subtle but it's there and it's getting more pronounced I'm really picking up on it I'm starting to see that and I think that's our part of our natural built-in abilities to be able to have that silent communication with one another and I, th I can feel that starting to come back so it's like right right before you you're about to say something and you're about to go into your into externalizing your line of thought and the conversation or just starting a conversation you know with somebody and you're you, you've got it already kind of configured what you're going to say and everything there's some there's a thread there that connects not every single time you know people it has to be reciproc reciprocated and a reciprocal exchange and platform that you're on 
but I am seeing that it's it's really interesting with food delivery because there's uh, usually happens when it's like rushed you know and and you're not even noticing it you're not trying or anything you walk in say the name sometimes they already know who you're there for kind of pick up on it there's an order that's been sitting there and yeah it's interesting or even with customers sometimes so and that's another reason why I believe in the mosaic thing is that it is so vast and you know all of us are carrying what we carry and the timing of when people coming in too is also pretty pretty remarkable you know to see the unique shields that people kind of ride in on on these things the themes and everything so i think i'll wrap it up there hope everyone's having a good weekend it feels like everything came back to life over here orders have been well it's it's the stimulus money we've got there i'm not complaining but they're throwing a lot of money on us there, there's a there's talk of this $300 per kid a month now that they're going to do. There's the extra earned income credit. They're adding another $1,500, is it? $1,500 per kid or something. Uh, mainly helping out the parents, helping out families, build back better, all of it. So, but it's just, it's, uh, I know there's a lot of companies that really suffered through this and businesses that hurt, so it's gonna, it is gonna help, but at the same time, it feels like there's just a lot of booming that's happening too, that things are picking back up, but I'm sure that's regional and state by state even in some cases, but yeah, like I said, I'm not complaining, it's nice, and me and the kids are planning a trip to the Gruel over the summer back to Florida, so it's gonna be nice. All right, everybody take care.